We're going to go over dominating sets and domination numbers of graphs. To begin, we'll have to understand what domination means in the context of graph theory, and it's very simple. A vertex is said to dominate itself and each of its neighbors. So for a quick example, let's just sketch a simple graph here. Say this vertex in the middle is V, and these other three vertices are A, B, and C. If we focus on the vertex V, what is V dominating? V dominates itself, and it dominates each of its neighbors. That's A, B, and C. So V alone, in fact, dominates every vertex of this graph. If, on the other hand, we focus on the vertex A, A is dominating itself, and it's dominating the vertex V. A vertex is said to dominate itself and each of its neighbors. Not so bad, right? So then, what's a dominating set? Well, if we say that G is a graph, then a set S of vertices of G is a dominating set of G if every vertex of G is dominated by some vertex in S, meaning that any vertex not in S is adjacent to some vertex that is in S. To illustrate this definition, here's a graph taken straight from the text by Chartrand and Zhang, and we want to find a dominating set of this graph. That's just going to be some set of vertices that together dominate every vertex in the graph. And dominating sets are not unique. We could, of course, take every single vertex in the graph. That for sure would be a dominating set, but most of the time that's not going to be necessary. For this graph, we certainly don't need to use every vertex to dominate the entire graph. Let's say we use the vertex V10, the vertex V2, the vertex V7, and the vertex V5. As we could easily verify, this set is a dominating set of the graph. Every vertex in the set is of course dominated by itself, and every vertex not in the set is dominated by some vertex in S. Just for a couple examples, the vertex V1 is dominated by V10 as well as V2. The vertex V11 is also dominated by those same two vertices. The vertex V8 is dominated by V7. Indeed, S is a dominating set of the graph. And you may notice the cardinality of S is equal to 4. So we've dominated the whole graph with four vertices. But we may be interested in a smaller dominating set. Could we dominate the graph with fewer vertices? That's what minimum dominating sets and domination numbers are all about. Among all dominating sets of a graph, there is of course some smallest cardinality necessary in order to dominate the graph. Whatever that cardinality is, is the domination number of the graph, denoted as lowercase gamma of the graph, and a dominating set of minimum cardinality is of course called a minimum dominating set. Now the example we saw earlier of a dominating set with four vertices is in fact not a minimum dominating set of this graph. We can do one better. So here's an example, I'm just going to call it S again. This is a minimum dominating set. We could have just used these three vertices. That's V1, V11, and V6. And you should quickly be able to verify for yourself this is a dominating set. Its cardinality is equal to 3. Now I'm telling you this is a minimum dominating set, but of course I haven't verified it. Definitely the domination number of this graph will have to be no greater than 3, since 3 vertices we see is sufficient to dominate the whole graph, but are 3 vertices necessary? 
Could we possibly dominate this graph with two vertices? Well, in this case, we can reason our way to conclude that would be impossible. Notice that the maximum degree of this graph is four, which is obtained by a couple vertices, but no vertex has a degree greater than four in this graph. So we could say the maximum degree of G is equal to four. Since each vertex dominates itself and all of its neighbors, this means that if we pick two vertices from this graph, they could at most dominate all of their four neighbors and then themselves, and there are two vertices that could do that, so that would be a total of 10 vertices maximum that could be dominated in this graph by two vertices. But we notice the graph has 11 vertices. So since two vertices could at most dominate 10 vertices of this graph, but the graph has more than 10 vertices, we know for sure it's impossible to have a dominating set of this graph with only two or fewer vertices. So indeed, the domination number not only has to be no greater than three, but we also see that it can't be smaller than three. And so we can write for sure the domination number of this graph G is equal to three. That's the cardinality of a minimum dominating set, which we see here. To take you through that logic one more time, notice the maximum degree of this graph is four. So any single vertex can dominate at most itself and its four neighbors. That's five vertices total. So two vertices could dominate a maximum of 10 vertices, but this graph has more than 10 vertices. So we see there's no way that two vertices could ever dominate this graph. Indeed, three is the minimum possible. Now, of course, dominating sets and even minimum dominating sets are not unique. For example, the domination number of a complete graph, Kn, is equal to one. If you pick any vertex in a complete graph, it will, by itself, dominate the entire graph. On the other hand, what would the domination number of an empty graph be? An empty graph is like the complement of a complete graph, so it's all vertices, no edges. Well, for this sort of graph, each vertex, since there are no edges, could only dominate itself, and so we'll actually need every single vertex to form any dominating set, and that would indeed also be the minimum dominating set. So there's a few examples, a little bit about these definitions of domination numbers and dominating sets. Hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. So much for me, there's nothing here to hold on to, do I want to? Tomorrow